Hello everyone, uh, in this tutorial we'll be going over how to uh, do a Coanda effect simulation in Open Foam. Um, for those of you not familiar, a uh, Coanda effect is basically the tendency of um, a, uh, jet, a jet flow to stick to the wall um, of an aerodynamic body. Um, so in this case, uh, so in some cases it can be used uh, in aircraft to redirect uh, flow over a certain surface to produce uh, lift over that surface. Um, so we'll start with the what well, the end result of this simulation. Um, so here you can see uh, a spherical body with a cylindrical center um, and there's a little slot in the cylindrical center that protrudes from the top of the body that emits a jet of air with initial velocity radially outward this way and this is an axisymmetric body so here this line here you can see is um, is the axis of symmetry so if you revolve this shape you would get a spherical a semi-spherical um, object with a cylindrical center um, so the initial velocity here is supposed to be set directly uh, outward, radially outward, but you can see by the Coanda effect, it's deflected downward due to basically sticking to the, the wall. Um, so uh, let's go briefly go over the case files. So you can find all of the, all of the code necessary to run the simulation in the link in the description. It's a GitHub repository. Um, and in the GitHub repository, you have the case directory, which contains all of the open foam configuration files, um, a clean script for your convenience uh, to clean up um, a simulation. It, it removes all generated files. Um, this is actually a generated file. I've run the simulation in this folder uh, beforehand. And this mesh contains the script to um, generate the body I just, the geometry I showed you and um, with uh, GMesh, GMSH, which is a fully script-based um, meshing program, which also has a GUI. Um, and uh, this run script is all you need to run in order to run a complete simulation uh, from start to finish. Mesh generation, uh, an actual simulation running. So we'll just take a look at the commands here. So here is the GMesh script to output the to generate an output into a format that the an open foam utility can convert from. This GMesh to foam is the open foam utility that converts the output and, and into an open foam format. This change dictionary is uh, uh, so when going from GMesh to open foam, all of the boundary names you've defined in GMesh are not mapped uh, to physical boundary conditions in open foam so this change directory dictionary is used to do that automatically um, and to do that you also has to have to specify a change dictionary dict inside the system case system folder um, so you can see we have as you'll see in the gmesh files we've defined the names wedge 0 wedge 1 this is sort of a regex for you know 0 and 1 or for all um, names with which uh, and uh, the inlet outlet and these names will all be defined in the gmesh script fan outlet um, which corresponds to the the jet um, where the jet flow originates from um, and you, can, you can see I am giving it uh, these physical boundary names wall patch is the most generic and uh, they, you typically use those when you are you have some sort of fixed velocity inlet or fixed pressure boundary condition, um, and this is these are the t of type wedge, which represents um, two sides of a wedge of an axisymmetric mesh. So this is the mapping. Uh, notice that change dictionary dict file name was not mentioned anywhere here, which means that OpenFoam expects it to be named so. Um, and finally, this is the command to run the simple foam solver on your boundary, on your specified boundary conditions and mesh. So let's go over the mesh briefly. Um, 
let's see. So Gmesh also has a nice GUI um, where you can view your mesh. Uh, you can see this looks familiar, our cylindrical sort of um, center with a spherical body, uh, line of axis symmetry. Here we have defined to be the outlet, here the inlet, and here just a simple wall. Um, and of course this piece here is the slot at which a fixed velocity uh, jet flow will be inserted into the domain. Um, and that's about it. And to look, take a look at the mesh, it's fully unstructured for simplicity. Um, of course if you want a really accurate simulation you'd want to use like a uh, quadrilateral extrusion to get sort of like a boundary layer going. But for purposes, for just for simplicity, I've made everything fully unstructured. So you can see it's a little bit of a coarse mesh, but good enough to get some qualitatively uh, reasonable results. Um, now, taking a look at the actual script here, you can see I have these inputs uh, for geometric for for the geometry. Um, what's great about GMesh is that whole mesh I just showed you was generated entirely from this script. So if you want to do a parametric study and you want to say like how does curve radius affect the lift you get or whatnot, you can simply change this curve radius variable um, with a Python script or something and run simulations in batches and, and sort of determine an optimal according to the simulation. Um, and these are parameters for the LC, which uh, abbreviation for length characteristic, which is basically the grid size, grid cell size. And uh, here I, and from here on, it's a little tedious, but once you have it in place, um, you know, um, you get an automated, you know, mesh generation, geometry and mesh generation. So um, this CE here stands for current entity. It's uh, what I, every time you create a geometrical entity, such as a point or a line, um, you need to assign it some arbitrary ID, so I've simply set CE aside to be an incremental counter for each new geometrical entity. So you can see I create points here, this represents the top of the cylindrical center, and then as soon as I have those points, I create the line from it, create points and lines, uh, and so forth. Um, and each time I create a line, I add it to this loop lines array, um, because when we create the surface which bounds the actual mesh, we need to have a uh, loop line that represents the, that boundary. And as you can see, as we go along and create all the lines, we s here we specify, we make a line loop and then s use that to create a surface. And with a surface, now GMesh actually creates the triangulated mesh that you saw earlier. Um, it does this all in the context of surfaces. So open foam for axisymmetric simulations requires a wedge angle of five degrees. Um, so that's what I'm doing here. Um, but additionally, it wants the center of this wedge to be coincident with the XY plane. Um, so that's why I have this rotation of 2.5 degrees in one direction, and then finally the extrusion back out to 5 degrees. So you have a, center, a wedge centered around the XY plane. And here's what I referred to earlier, the names of our actual physical boundary conditions that will be recognized in the open foam configuration files. Wedge 0, Wedge 1, uh, walls, inlet, fan outlet, the jet, the jet where the jet stream originates, and the outlet of the domain. And you finally should um, specify a physical volume, the ID of which is arbitrary and doesn't matter, but you should specify a physical volume. And in this case, it's the, it's the index of 1 from the extrusion from the return of the extrusion command, um, which is just the way it's, it, it, it's set up. Okay, so now we can look at what's, um, as you can see I've run this beforehand, you can see about 10,000 iterations, um, and if we go into zero, which is the boundary condition folder, you can see with pressure I've I have a fan outlet to be zero gradient, so that's where the jet is coming from. I've, I've opted to do a fixed velocity jet outlet. And you can see it's expected wall zero gradient wedge, wedge type wedge, and the inlet and outlet to be a simple free stream pressure boundary condition. And for the velocity here, you can see our fixed velocity of 10 meters per second. 
and walls no slip uh, wedge of type wedge um, and that's about it um, yeah the the turbulence I mean it depends on what turbulence model you use but they all have their own specific you know uh, wall functions that uh, you'll need to look up if you use if you elect to use a different turbulence model um, <clears throat> So that's about it, I believe, for this case. Um, uh, just one more important point. Um, usually, when you run when you run um, axisymmetric simulations, you can, you can get uh, Open Foam can get really finicky about the normals of the wedge planes and points close to each other near the uh, line of axisymmetry. So it's important to have your write format to be binary instead of what seems to be the default of ASCII um, because if you have your write format as ASCII your meshes will be written in ASCII form and that tends to lop off uh, some of the uh, um, some of the you know uh, precise decimals describing the, the spatial location. Um, you could try to you know make your write precision huge but it's better just to have your write precision binary. I mean, your 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 files will be smaller and you'll retain full accuracy. Um, so that's it for that. And maybe for a future video, I'll I'll uh, you I'll go over the post um, process results, the forces here, and compare the fan outlet force to the wall force. Um, in this case. Um, I can't directly compare it yet because I've included the outer, the outer wall, in in the walls. So you're not actually just getting the force of the the way it's set up right now. You're not just getting the force over the spherical surface. But if you if you were to you know make another boundary condition just representing the spherical surface, then you could compare the force between the fan outlet and this spherical spherical section and see if coanda effect, you know, uh, how much uh, less. Uh, you can compare um, the force you get rather than just using the jet as a uh, directly than using the jet directly for thrust so that would be interesting to compare um, but yeah anyways uh, that's about it for this case um, if you have any questions uh, please leave them in the comments thanks for watching